Welcome to Electron Online, and here in this video we're going to look at what we call the sp2 hybridization which uh, what that really means is that through a special process called the hybridization process atoms such as boron can take p orbitals and an s orbital and turn them into something called sp2 orbitals those are hybrid orbitals those are changed shape orbitals an orbital with a different shape and how does that happen well take a look Boron is the fifth element in the periodic table. It has five protons in the nucleus, five electrons. The first two in the 1s orbital, the next two in the 2s orbital, and then the fifth one in the 2p orbital. And of course, there's three p orbitals, only one electron, meaning that electron will reside in one of those three p orbitals. We know that boron makes as many as three bonds. For example, boron can make boron trifluoride, and so we know that boron can bond with three other atoms, but that doesn't become apparent here because these two atoms already fill an s orbital, so these are not likely to make a bond, and so there should only be one electron available to make a bond for boron. But we know that it makes as many as three bonds. So what happens is it goes through this hybridization process, and that, that can happen when there's empty orbitals in such a way that the electrons in the second energy level can rearrange themselves like this and that's called electron promotion. So an electron gets promoted to a higher energy state because the p orbitals are at a higher energy state than the s orbitals in the second energy level. That requires some energy but now we have three electrons in three different orbitals able to make bonds. But we know that when they make bonds the molecule will look trigonal planar. And so we couldn't really accomplish that when we have an electron in an s orbital and two electrons in 2p orbitals. We know the molecule will look something like that in a planar state. It will be trigonal planar as we call it. And we have to find a way to make that happen. So what happens is the s orbital and the 2p orbitals come together. They remorph into what we call sp2 orbitals. There's three of them, and so we end up with three sp2 orbitals and one empty p orbital. The sp2 orbitals, they're at a higher energy state than the s orbitals and at a lower energy state than the 2p orbitals. And since one electron comes from here and two electrons come from there, it's about one-third the distance in energy from there to the s orbital, so it goes down like this, and two-thirds the distance from there to there. So they're at a somewhat lower energy state, and they then can each then filled with a single electron, and all three of the sp2 orbitals are exactly the same in, in shape. So you take an s orbital and two p orbitals. Remember, an s orbital is spherical in shape, and then you take a p orbital like this, and you take a p orbital that looks like this, and you morph them together, and you end up with a situation like that in the plane where you have one orbital coming out like this with a large lobe and a small lobe at the end. Then at a 120 degree angle, you have another large lobe coming this way with a small lobe coming out here. And another 120 degrees in this direction, you have another large lobe coming this way with a small lobe coming this way. Notice that all three of these electron lobes or electron orbitals are 120 degrees from each other all in the same plane 120 degrees like that so that's where the trigonal planar shape comes from and notice that they're all exactly the same in shape and now they're called sp2 orbitals and there's three of them there's an sp2 orbital there's an sp2 orbital and there's an sp2 orbital and each one of them will then get a single electron and so each one of those single orbitals with a single electron can then form a bond and that's how boron makes a bond with three fluoride atoms so to, to get boron trifluoride and of course what the atom then will look like so we then have three fluorine atoms coming in here and then making bonds with the available sp2 orbitals and so that's what boron trifluoride will look like, oh, if I can keep them in the correct shape, notice that they're planar in shape and the molecule just fell apart. But anyway, I hope you got the idea. So triplanar, uh, it's a, a planar uh, molecule and, uh, and it's formed by these hybridized, as we call them, hybridized orbitals reshaped to allow the bonding to take place. And they all have to be at the same energy level, making the exact same type of bonds. And that's what we call SP2 orbitals.